Alright, hello there. Um, I am Richard. I'm uh, a developer on the Microsoft MakeCode team. And I'm Joe. I'm also a developer on the Microsoft MakeCode team. And uh, we're going to be taking through a tour of the uh, MakeCode Arcade extension for VS Code today. Um, so first, let's talk a little bit about MakeCode. Uh, Microsoft MakeCode is a free and open source learn to code platform. And um, it targets middle school and high school age students. Um, and it's a way for you to learn how to code using blocks, TypeScript, Python, and it has a real focus on creativity. So we show three of our um, editors that we support over here. So um, we have uh, the Microbit, which is a little microcontroller you can use. It has a little 5x5 five five screen, a bunch of sensors. It's very cute. Um, we also support coding for Minecraft Education Edition, so making your own little mod-like programs that you can run inside of Minecraft. And um, the thing we're talking about today, which is MakeCode Arcade, which is kind of built around making these retro video game aesthetic type games. So the idea with Microsoft MakeCode is really that we're trying to increase the diversity and inclusion um, for uh, uh, tech by making it so that a lot of people who are more interested in these creative fields are coming in to um, work on things because they're, they're interested in the things they're, they're working on. So kind of the bread and butter of MakeCode is block-based programming. Um, so here I'm just making a really simple program in our editor and um, we have a nice little drag and drop interface that you've probably seen before if you've interacted with learn to code things like Scratch or um, Google Blockly. Um, the thing that really sets MakeCode apart from other learn to code platforms though is what we like to call dual modality. So um, I can write my code in blocks in MakeCode and I can switch to JavaScript and I can go back and forth between the two. Um, same thing with Python. And um, most will just let you see the code. Um, we actually let you edit it. So you can make changes in JavaScript. You can go back to um, blocks and back and forth. Um, and so it kind of has this really clear progression path that you can go through when you are learning to code. You start in blocks, you move to text, and um, keep going from there. Um, today, like I mentioned before, we're talking about MakeCode Arcade. So that is um, learning to code with retro video games. And what do we mean by retro video games? Well. Um, here are a bunch of video games that Joey and I have made, um, along with other people on the MakeCode team. And I, I'm not exaggerating to say we've probably made hundreds more than what we're showing you here, but here's just a random sampling of, of games that we've put together that are often very silly. Um, and so um, when we're talking about retro video games, we're talking about these like quick arcade style games with pixel graphics and limited colors. Um, specifically, MakeCode Arcade is um, kind of aping old uh, retro video game consoles of yesteryear. So we have 16 colors that you can support, um, 160 by 120 pixel screen, um, only seven buttons for input. So up, down, left, right, A, B, and pause. And um, you know, no mouse or keyboard or anything like that. And uh, multiplayer with up to four players. And um, the reason that we have these constraints are because, well, one, it breeds creativity. Um, it's a lot uh, more interesting to make these uh, little retro games when um, you're not as worried about your art because you're building with pixel art. And um, you have to kind of be creative about trying to recreate games that you've experienced before in this new kind of format. Um, the other thing, though, the really cool thing about Make It Arcade is that you can play your games on real hardware. So um, we have an open source hardware specification. Anyone can just take this and build their own hardware as long as they meet our specification. And you can run your MakeCode Arcade games on that hardware. So Joey's showing off some random ones um, that he happens to have on uh, hand right now. But um, here's a sampling. Um, and Microsoft, we don't make any hardware for MakeCode Arcade. All of this is done by third party people who just took our open source hardware specification and started making their own their own hardware. Um, when we made this specification, we chose it to be extremely inexpensive. So the bill of materials to make these things is only around like ten dollars. So um, going to retail, you end up with boards that cost anywhere between like twenty to thirty dollars. So it's really um, you know achievable for this to reach people who are um, lower income or in um, something like a school environment, being able to buy a classroom set of these MakeCode Arcade boards so that you can you know walk your entire class through this. Uh, the last thing is we use a special bootloader so that when you make these games, um, when you plug the device into your computer, it shows up as a USB drive. 
So putting your code onto the device is as simple as dragging and dropping it over. So that's a little bit about MakeCode Arcade. Um, one thing that you might be worried about when you see that we're programming microcontrollers, um, if you have any experience with Arduino or anything like that, is are we writing code in C? Um, really low level stuff that's kind of difficult to wrap your head around. Um, well, no, the other nice thing about MakeCode Arcade is we let you use a modern programming language to do this stuff. So we like to call this static TypeScript and it is um, pretty much all of TypeScript. There's just a little bit that's kind of restricted to make this run better on these microcontroller-like devices. But we compile this down all the way down to machine code. We're not running a JavaScript interpreter on these really low-cost devices. And so we let you have this high-level, you know, modern code that you can run on this really low-end, inexpensive hardware. That kind of progression, going from the blocks to this modern programming um, environment, is the real selling point of MakeCode. And to this point, uh, like up till now, we've really just been focusing on going between blocks and the text-based experience that we have inside of MakeCode itself. Um, so the question we asked ourselves was, what comes after that? We start in blocks, we graduate to text, and then where do we go? And um, well, the answer is we want to go to Visual Studio Code. So um, the idea here is that students can learn real professional coding tools. Um, they can use all of the great extensions that already come with Visual Studio Code or that you can download, things like LiveShare for doing collaboration or using source control like GitHub so that they can collaborate on projects with other people. And um, so when we were making this extension, um, we wanted to make sure that we also brought all of the goodness from MakeCode over. So not just supporting the platform stuff that we've been talking about so far, we have a bunch of things like you know, a really nice pixel art editor and a music editor and being able to make tile maps that really makes these programming these video games a rich, fun and um, uh, enjoyable experience for, you know, kids and adults. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to switch over to a brief demo. Load up VS Code here and I've already got my extension installed. Um, and you'll see that when I install this extension, we have um, a little make code icon that shows over here on the left hand pane. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And um, here we have a bunch of actions that you can do um, related to a MakeCode project. So it's worth noting that all of these things are also available in the command palette. We've just broken them out into buttons to make it easier for kids who are not necessarily used to typing commands into um, Visual Studio Code. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. I'm in an empty folder right now. And I'm going to choose um, the platformer template. Um, so this is going to go ahead and create a um, simple platformer game for me. And here we go. Um, I've got my project all populated over here. And if we look over at main.ts, we can see the code for my program. Um, so uh, that's cool, but we want to be able to actually run this code inside of Visual Studio Code. So if we head back over to our Asset Explorer for a second, we can go ahead and launch the MakeCode simulator. So if I run that, it's going to open a pane in Visual Studio Code. And um, once my project is done building, um, we get a little Game Boy-like device that is actually running my code. Um, so um, one thing you might note is the frame rate is a little worse um, on the recording than it actually is. I, it runs at 30 frames per second, um, but uh, just something to note. Um, so um, we've already got a little game going that we can play inside of here. And when I make changes to my code on the left-hand side, um, this will automatically reload and um, reflect those changes. So I'm going to go ahead and change the background color to pink, um, which I happen to know is color number three. And once it's done building, um, we'll see the simulator reload. And now I have a nice sunset sky behind my platformer game. So um, we've looked at the code so far, and one thing that we uh, haven't seen is where all of these images um, and tile maps and all of that stuff is coming from. And so we um, uh, have those in this Asset Explorer pane um, down here at the bottom. So if I go ahead and expand this, we can see a list of the images that are in my game. So I've got two images. I've got a player image and an enemy image. So I'll go ahead and open up the player image. And that's going to pop open um, our pixel editor, um, which we, uh, this is the same one that we use inside of um, MakeCode. So, oops. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and change this player image to be something else, switch it to be, um, well, not that. 
uh, we'll go with um, a strawberry. And um, with that, if I switch back over to my game, it'll reload. And we can see that I now have a um, strawberry as my play, player character. Um, so it has these nice, rich, like image editing experience, but we've moved it into VS Code. And we have a bunch of more video game specific things too. So I can also show off real quick. Um, we have this tile map, which is the level of our game. And um, I could edit this as well if I wanted to make a new level or, you know, things like that. Um, so um, once you've made your game, um, you probably don't want to keep playing it in Visual Studio Code. Um, you can choose to build it for hardware. So we have that option right here. You just select the device that you have. It lets you build it to a file, which, like I said, you can drag and drop over. Um, but the other option is you can share this with other people um, by creating a Make Code Share link. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to click this uh, Create Make Code Share link. And when I do that, um, we go ahead and create this link that I can um, load inside of my browser. So I'm going to uh, open that real quick. And over here, um, we can see my game that I was just coding in Visual Studio Code is now um, accessible on a um, URL that I can send to other people and share. And um, even just to complete the circle, I can go ahead and click Edit Code and open this inside of Make Code itself. So you have this nice way of moving projects from um, Visual Studio Code to the uh, Make Code experience and um, back and forth. So um, when I say back and forth, I do mean back and forth. Let's look at another example. I'm going to open a um, locks project over here. So let me open up Tony Albatross Pro Dolphin. Um, so this is a game that Joey and I made a while ago um, with some other folks on the MakeCode team. And um, it is uh, written all in blocks. Um, and it's the uh, question of what happens when you combine the dolphin gameplay of Echo the Dolphin and um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater um, to do uh, tricks. So you, know, you can be a dolphin and do some tricks to rack up points and try and get a high score. Um, so this is written all in blocks. Um, and if I want to import this into Visual Studio Code, I can go ahead and create a share link for this as well. So I'll share that and copy this link. And when I switch back over to Visual Studio Code, um, I can open a new folder. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'm going to import this um, share link. So import project from URL, go ahead and paste that in. And this is going to download our Tony Albatross game um, locally. So once it has finished downloading all of the dependencies, um, we can open that up. And we see we have the TypeScript representation of our game. Um, and we can um, go ahead and look at all of the assets that are in the game as well. well they've all been imported over. Um, and uh, this should run exactly the same in the simulator if we run it over here as well. Um, so there are a few other cool things that this extension supports. Um, namely, um, MakeCode has its own concept of extensions. So these are libraries that anyone can publish to a GitHub repo. And they add different functionality for games. So you might, for example, make an extension that adds you know, new APIs for doing cool animations or maybe one that makes it um, adds extra functionality for tile maps. Or we have one that's community, from a community member that actually does a 3D renderer on our 160 by 120 pixel screen. Um, and so we also allow you to load those extensions inside here. You can add them to your project. And we have a little like recommended list of extensions to, to get you started. All right, with that, there's one other cool thing we want to demo um, for MakeCode Arcade which is um, multiplayer. So with these retro video game consoles, multiplayer is a big part of the experience. And um, Joey, do you want to talk a little bit about multiplayer in MakeCode Arcade? Yes. So last end of last year, we added support for multiplayer uh, in MakeCode Arcade. That's online multiplayer. We've always had support for if you plug in four gamepad controllers, like an Xbox controller or anything that supports the gamepad API, uh, or even just using the keyboard, uh, WASD and IJKL. 
to play with multiple people on one simulator. But with this new feature, we are able to play over the internet with other users. So Richard appears to be loading up a make code perfect fit game. This is one of our favorite demos. Uh, this is another one that we made on the stream. Uh, and you can see in, in this simulator, we have four different characters underneath uh, the game to represent the four players. Uh, there's also a host multiplayer game button that gets added in right here. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and host this multiplayer game, and um, we'll have uh, Joey join me. Um, so I'm showing this stuff off inside of the make code editor, but all of this stuff works in um, uh, the VS Code extension as well. Yes, right. you can use the same share link, link you generated in the VS Code extension to pop right into this screen. Uh, Right. So um, once I have started this multiplayer game, um, Joey has joined me. Um, he's down here, uh, player two. And um, we can play this game, um, which is incredibly difficult, where you try to fit into um, the shape of the wall as it comes towards you. Um, and all of this uh, multiplayer goodness is free and open source. You don't have to pay any money to have your game hosted or to um, share with friends. All you have to do is create an account and um, we do this peer, cool peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer. Um, so it kind of brings some more modern functionality to the old four-player retro video game experience. So um, with that, if you like what you've seen here, we host a live stream three days a week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Joey and myself and some other developers on the MakeCode team, where we just make video games. We show how to do cool stuff in arcade. We sometimes use the VS Code extension to um, make projects. And it's a great chance if you ever want to chat with the MakeCode developers or try to learn some tips about how to make cool video games, um, please drop us a line. Um, we also post all of these live streams on YouTube afterwards, um, so you can also watch the videos there. And um, we will leave you with some uh, links. Um, so MakeCode Arcade, you can get that at arcade.makecode.com. As I mentioned before, it's free, it's open source. Um, we also have forums at forum.makecode.com. We also host uh, monthly game jams there for people to make video games, share them. They're usually themed around a setting. So, um, you know, check those out. We get a lot of participation from both students and teachers and just, you know, hobbyist developers who um, like this sort of thing. And um, our extension is also open source. You can get that at github.com slash Microsoft slash VS Code Make Code and um, check out the code there. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I am Richard uh, from the Make Code team. And I'm Joey, uh, also from the Mako team. Uh, if you find any issues or if you see any need for new features, please just let us know, because this is a very new extension that we've been working on for just a few months. Yep. Thank you. And um, if you find any uses for this, like with teachers or anything along those lines, please uh, drop us a line. We love to hear stories about that in education. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you so much for joining us.